So Ramadan came quickly, it's already here, and it's going on and you feel left behind. It's a gift from Allah, the month of forgiveness, the month of Quran. And not taking full advantage of this month is a huge mistake. So stick with me in this video to help you make this Ramadan your best Ramadan ever, even though we're a few days into it already. In this video, I'll share my specific method for planning Ramadan that works if you're doing it before Ramadan starts or even if you're 10, 15 days into the month. This works if you've never planned a Ramadan before. You're not used to making a huge effort. You're not used to aiming to have your best Ramadan ever. And if you're someone who has a really tight schedule or who doesn't find the energy to do much in Ramadan. Let's get started, Bismillah. So without this first thing, you will actually never achieve anything in Ramadan. You'll find yourself always off track and completely lost. So the first thing you'll need to do is actually take an audit of your time. What that looks like is literally putting the time when you wake up in the morning on a piece of paper or a note or whatever on your phone, the time that you wake up for the main portion of the day, the time that you go to sleep for the main sleep of the night, and then fill in all the blocks in between there where there are things that you cannot negotiate. You cannot move, there's no flexibility with them. Things like your work, your sleep, prayer times, tarawih, or the time when you're breaking your fast. These things like at Maghrib time, we're definitely gonna break our fast and eat. So that's immovable. So put that into this schedule that we're looking at. If you're gonna go tarawih every day, then put that because that's immovable. Put your time of sleep, your time of work, all this is immovable. Put that all in. Now, once you put those things in, you're gonna find that there are empty blocks where there's nothing there that's immovable, that's unflexible. Now you have time to work with. Because what we're doing is we're working with reality. We have to sleep, we have to work, we have to do these things. But outside of those hours, that's where we want to pack it with ibadah. Of course, a level of ibadah you can do, but we want to know what we're working with here. Are we working with just half an hour a day where we can do ibadah? Are we working with four hours, five hours where we can do ibadah? What are we working with? That's what you're going to find out in this first step. Now, in terms of identifying the times where you're free, Keep in mind that you might be able to skim off some bits of sleep here and there for the sake of Ramadan. You might want to prioritize having some free time before suhoor, for example, because it's a very special time to make du'a and to pray and read Qur'an. But yes, the first step in this process is finding the free time slots that you have in your day. And after you've found the time slots for your ibadah, it's time to consider something of more importance that without it, you'd actually lose complete direction over what you're doing in your day. And then you're going to want to do a crazy brain dump of all the types of ibadah that you can think of. Now, in Ramadan, there are types of ibadah that are more recommended, like reading the Qur'an, it's the month of the Qur'an, like making dua, Allah mentions that literally next to the ayat about Ramadan, like giving charity, the Prophet ﷺ was the most generous and he was the most generous out of the whole year in Ramadan. And of course, the Tarawih prayers and the prayers at night. These are some key ibadat that we can do in the month of Ramadan. But on top of those things, you're still going to want to do a list of all the types of worship that you can think of. Put a big list because we're going to choose from these. We're not going to do all of them, of course. So once you have that list, we're going to make a short list of the ones that we're going to go with. Now, the amount that you go with depends on you, what you've done last year. Last year, what did you do? Did you just pray tarawih, nothing else? Did you not even pray tarawih? Did you not pray tarawih, but you read Quran at home? What did you do last year and build upon that? So for example, if last year you were reading Quran every day and you were praying tarawih every day, these are two things that you were doing. So this year, if you were consistent with those two things last year, you might just want to add one thing because we're thinking long-term here. We're thinking in five years, in 10 years, in 10 Ramadans, if Allah gives us that time, how is my Ramadan going to be? If I add one thing every year, then by the time in five, 10 years, I'm going to be really doing a lot in Ramadan, filling all my time with worship of Allah. The other thing you want to keep in mind is what is something that you can keep up for this whole month? Something that is realistic. For example, if you've never read the Quran cover to cover, and then you come and you say, I'm going to read it two times this month then we'll say that's not realistic. It's not something you're likely to be consistent with. Also, looking at the time audit that you did, you're going to know the time that you have for these ibadat. And therefore, you're going to know the times of day when you're free to do ibadah, to do worship. So based on that, if you're free between Asr and Maghrib, that is usually a lower energy time of the day. So that's not going to be a time, for example, where you sit and you memorize the Quran because that's quite energy intensive. You're going to do something a bit more relaxed, maybe like making dua, maybe reading some Qur'an, maybe listening to a lecture or contemplating on the Qur'an, for example. So you've got all of your list of ibadat. 
And now you're narrowing it down to about two to five, six different things that you can fit into your Ramadan. And now remember, for each of these things, you're going to want to think of how much energy that ibad will take from you and how much time it requires to do the actual amount of it. Some other ideas I have for you are doing the adhkar, the dhikr, the remembrance of Allah, the specific ones that Prophet ﷺ mentioned to us in the morning after Fajr and after Asr, the Masah. Also, maybe you could learn the adhkar to do after Salat, after you pray. Learn a few of those, do them after you pray and take them with you outside of Ramadan as well. Another thing could be just using the siwak, using that stick to clean your teeth with. Doing that before Salah is a sunnah and it's very easy to do, something special to do in Ramadan. And again, you could take that with you outside of Ramadan quite easily. Another thing is praying the sunnah prayers, the 12 rakah, that's sunnah to pray before and after each obligatory prayer. You could get in the habit of doing those or doing some of those. There's also some out of the box thinking ones like helping your parents more than you usually do, making sure you're in touch with your family members, you're connecting with them, you're checking in on them. And of course, praying inside of the masjid with the jama'ah. This is really good habit to establish as well. So knowing exactly the acts of worship that you're gonna do in this month, they're gonna keep you focused, they're gonna give you direction and gonna let you know what you're not doing so you can focus on what you are doing. So now you've got the time that you've got free. You've got your list of ibadat. You know how much of them you're going to do. How are you actually going to stick to these goals and habits? Because achieving all of these and sticking with them throughout the month could actually be very difficult unless you do the next thing I'm going to explain to you right now. You're going to take each of those acts of worship and you're going to write it out in the following format sentence. I do X worship for this amount of time or frequency at this time in this location and then how often every day. So for example, I read one juz of Quran after Fajr in the masjid every day. You need all of these ingredients in your Ramadan habits for you to be successful and stick with them. Because I'll tell you what happens. I've got it in my head that I'm going to read one juz of Quran, for example. But then if I'm not sure where I'm going to do it or when exactly I'm going to do it, I will most likely not do it. I'll just wait for like random opportunities to read and that may not be enough to actually read that juz of Qur'an. Likewise, one that I made a mistake with in the past is dua. I want to make these certain duas in Ramadan, but I never set a specific time for it. Or the time that I set was like before Maghrib. But setting the time before something is hard to actually gauge. So it's better to set it at a time after something you already do. So for example, I make these seven special du'as after Asr every day on my way home from the masjid. That's actually one of my real ones for this year. So do that with all of those acts of worship. Make sure you've written out the sentence like that. And then make sure you've got everything ready that you need for that thing. For example, if you're reading Quran, make sure you have a mushaf. If you're going to make du'a, then make sure those du'as are written down or in your head. If you're going to give charity, make sure you know the amount of charity and where you're going to give charity. That's actually a bonus I could give you right now. When it comes to charity, do not fumble around in the last 10 nights looking for places. Where do I give charity? What do I do? And the time you spent looking for good charities to give to, you actually could have been praying or reading Quran in those very precious last 10 nights. So ahead of the last 10 nights, make sure you have a list with links ideally to go and donate to specific places. If you're gonna give in cash, make sure you withdraw cash and you've got it ready to give. And once you've got those sentences written out, a great thing to do is just have a little chart that you tick off every day. Let's say you've got three habits that you're doing this month, write them down and then for every day of Ramadan, either tick them off or not. It'll make you feel satisfied of what you accomplished that day. And it's a way of keeping yourself accountable that, okay, I missed that day. I'm not gonna miss two days in a row and make that a rule for yourself. I can miss one day, but I will never miss two days in a row. And even better, to make it satisfying and attractive to yourself, when you do a five-day streak of one of your habits, treat yourself. Get that special coffee at night, get that sweet at night, whatever it is that you enjoy. Celebrate once you've accomplished five days of doing something nonstop. And then the great thing about this is if you've got two, three, four, five goals planned out like this, after Ramadan, when you're still in the mood, you could take one, two of them and continue them in your life for the rest of Ramadan. And that's what Ramadan's really about. It's about getting that taqwa within the month. So after the month, you carry it with you. I always think about this from a dua point of view as well, that I'm making the duas in this month that will carry me for the whole year and beyond, inshallah. And that is how you stay consistent in Ramadan and out, inshallah. So follow these steps to plan your ideal Ramadan. You can start this day 10, day 15, even day 20 of Ramadan. You can set these goals and make the most of whatever time you have left. And once you've planned them out and written those sentences, share at least one of them in the comments to give inspiration and ideas to those reading them 
and also to hold yourself accountable that you're actually doing what we're saying in this video and you're going to go on and win. May Allah accept it from you. Subscribe if you like this video and I'll see you around. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.